What's up guys? Welcome to Tidal Gardens. Being a coral farm and all, we have a vested interest in anything that could improve the health and growth rate of the corals that we are farming. One of the major considerations of coral health is nutrition, and that brings up the topic of direct feeding. I happen to be a big proponent of feeding corals, but for those that want to get into feeding for the first time, it might be a little confusing and overwhelming because there's a lot of different food options out there and certain corals don't necessarily eat certain foods. The situation that you want to avoid at all costs is introducing a food into your system that isn't being readily consumed by your corals. And this is for two reasons. First, it's a waste of money. But what is even worse than that is that it's also very taxing on your filtration. The absolute worst case scenario is that this uneaten food decomposes and then it turbocharges the growth and population of other organisms that directly compete with your corals, whether that be algae or other inverts. My goal with this video is to show you the feeding response of a variety of corals not everyone has the time to sit and stare at a coral for 30 minutes to see if it actually is taking in the food, so hopefully this will be helpful. The powdered food I chose is Polyp Labs Refroids, which is also the exclusive sponsor of this video, so thank you very much to Polyp Lab. We have used their product on and off for close to 10 years at this point. I think that we pretty much started feeding Refroids when it first came out, so it's been a good long time. The other reason that I chose Polyp Lab is that it's a brand that most people are familiar with. You've probably seen it online, and I'm gonna go ahead and guess that many of you have also already tried this product. Right off the bat, I have to say that the majority of the time we're broadcast feeding foods for the fish. If we happen to see a coral looking like it's receptive to direct feeding, we'll give it a splash of some shrimp and then go about our way. Later on, we started to incorporate more and more of the powdered foods when we started to first mix the refroids into our frozen food mix. And then we took a look at the feeding responses of the corals with just refroids alone. The first one that we really tried this with was our Australophilia wilsoni. For months, we've been exclusively feeding these guys mysis shrimp, and they did great. They doubled in size, looked amazing. Based on that experience, I assumed that it was their food of choice and didn't really give it much of a second thought. When we finally took the time to actually film the time lapses though, I would argue that this coral was quite a lot more responsive to the powdered food. That is what got me curious about feeding responses from other varieties of coral, and here we are. Clearly, this video isn't an exhaustive list of all the corals that we have here, but you'll see that I cover a lot of the bases, and hopefully it'll give you guys an idea of the ones that responded and the ones that didn't. When feeding, there are a couple things that I'm looking for. The first is whether the coral takes it in at all, or if it treats it like detritus and tries to slough it off. The second thing is even if the coral rejects the food, did it trigger a feeding response so that it would become more likely to accept a different type of food that it prefers? I would consider that a win as well. Let's get right into the time lapses and we'll see what happens. What we have here is some candy cane coral or Calastria. For the longest time we've been feeding this thing pretty much anything. Like we've fed it some varieties of pellet food, we've fed it some frozen food as well, and here you're seeing it take in some of the refroids. Most people, I'm going to go ahead and guess, don't go out of their way to feed candy canes. They're such a hardy coral, they pretty much can get most of their nutritional needs just from the lighting. But if you want to go ahead and give them supplemental feeding, it does them a lot of good. I've noticed that the ones that are in our farm for a long period of time tend to do extremely well. It's always kind of a shock to us when we purchase newly imported Calastria. They are tiny in comparison. They're probably like a quarter of the size. So we kind of get ourselves spoiled with the ones that we're farming here. And it's like, oh, there's, there's a reason why it's this much bigger. It's because we actually take the time to feed these guys. 
what we're looking at here is a dragon soul favia quote unquote i think that this guy might be either a dipsastria or, or celastria not exactly sure of what it is really but these guys feeding has been a revelation in the past we really didn't take the time to feed them and this is one of the slowest growing corals that we've ever kept in captivity and we do try to farm everything but this is one of those corals that, is, that was so slow growing i didn't really Think that there was long-term viability in trying to farm this and it's really only been in the last couple of years where we've made a concerted effort to start feeding it now we usually again feed frozen foods but you can see that they take in uh, powdered food just as readily and this has been a game changer for their growth rate for the first time we're actually seeing new polyp formation when we leave them to their own devices, they take absolutely forever to add new mouths and to really put on mass. But lately we've been feeding the heck out of these things and it's getting to the point where I could see in, in longer term aquaculture settings that this might be more of a possibility than in years past. Euphilia have always been really tricky for us to feed to the point that we generally don't make a big effort to feed them. What you're seeing here is a colony of frog spawn. I'm pretty sure that they don't really do very much in the way of eating mysis. I'm looking at this footage here of some of the powdered food. It might be doing something, it may or may not. If I had to make a decision one way or another, I honestly probably wouldn't go out of my way to feed these guys. I know some people think that feeding them might exacerbate some other problems, perhaps more bacterial issues, and I think as this time lapse continues, it appears that it's more sloughing off the food than it is trying to take it in. Like I said, I know that it pretty much ignores the frozen food that we give it, so it's not a huge surprise if it's also ignoring some of this powdered food as well. But this is just what we're seeing in our coral farm. Your mileage may vary. So if you have a colony that's eating well, by all means, I'd continue feeding it. Just in my experience, they're not aggressive feeders at all. Mushrooms are kind of difficult to tell whether they're eating or not. This is a discosoma, and I have absolutely seen these things eat before. This is our goat discosoma, one of my favorite varieties. It pretty much rejected the powdered food outright, very quickly. It treated it just like detritus and spent most of the time lapse just hanging out afterwards. Compared to Discosoma, which may or may not, I think Rhodactus tend to be very responsive to food. This is the OG bounce mushroom. These guys do not like frozen at all, not even a little bit. They make no effort to try to eat that. However, when it comes to the powdered foods, they have an immediate feeding response. Oftentimes get this like onion shape where it fully closes up. Now this one doesn't do the onion thing, but many of the other Rhodactuses have. Or maybe it will do it, and I just have to wait a little bit longer. But as far as this time lapse goes, not so much. Okay, after having moved the camera a little bit, you can see the, the mouth has opened up and it's now starting to funnel in the rephroids. So this is a winner. Perhaps the last mushroom on this list, we have here a Recordia yuma. Yumas can be very fragile. A lot of the really spectacular versions that, that we see, the super rainbow types, they tend to not do great. And I wonder if that is just a matter of rough collection or whether it's susceptible to disease or if it's a nutritional problem. And if it is a nutritional problem, what should we be feeding it? Because in my experience, I don't know if they've really responded very well to anything that we've tried to feed. I know that they don't really like very much in the way of mysis. And I am not super convinced that they want to have anything to do with powdered food either. I don't know guys, have you been able to feed Recordia Yuma anything in particular? Because like I said, I don't know if they really do for us. Ganiopora and Bernard Poras, a lot of the more recent success that hobbyists are having with this coral is a result of the types of feeding that we're doing they also tend to be one of those corals that it's kind of difficult to tell if they're eating or not. They're not one of these corals that 
makes it very obvious that they're grabbing and consuming food. What I'm noticing is that it's kind kind of sloughing off some of the some of the powder, but we've had some better success with the frozen food for these guys. I kind of like to feed the fines, not so much like the big chunky stuff because these are very small polyped. But I have noticed that they tend to do quite a bit better when they're fed regularly. Then again, there's still a lot of activity going on. I don't know guys, what do you think? Do you think that the powder food is getting consumed or is it getting more or less ignored? It's always been a coin flip with these types of corals. This is a feeding time lapse of my favorite color morph of Acana chinata. This is our tie-dye Acana chinata. It pretty much eats anything. And the way that it eats is that it has a, a very thick mucus coat. Once you put any kind of food on top of it, it takes a little while to react. So this is where turning off all the flow and just letting it do its thing over the course of like 20 minutes to a half hour really benefits because it slowly retracts that mucus coat into the polyp. It's a process that gets faster and faster and faster as the feeding response goes. I do, however, notice that when we are feeding the frozen food, you get more tentacle extension, but when we're feeding the powdered food, you don't get as much in the way of tentacles, but you get that vacuuming effect of the mucus directly into the mouth. So pretty much everything that we throw onto this coral gets consumed. Acan echinatas can tend to be slower growing, so if you are facing that, give feeding a try. It goes a really long way. Next up, we have a chalice. Chalices, it's kind of a, a difficult category because it covers so many different types of coral. Certain varieties eat very aggressively and others, uh, it, they, the, the food just kind of sits there. Sometimes it makes its way into the mouth like the Acan Echinata. These things do like the mucus web vacuum, but I have a feeling that they take in very little and once they take in that little bit, they pretty much reject the rest. In this particular time lapse, I think what's happening is there's a tiny bit getting accepted, but then the rest of it kind of just gets consolidated into basically like a mucus and food parachute, and then it gets washed away. All of the feeding that we're doing is with the pumps off. If you were to try to feed a lot of this food with your pumps on, that is not going to go so well. It is almost immediately going to flush away. So that is one recommendation that I'm going to like throw out there. If you're going to be trying to feed with any regularity, you probably want to have an interval where you're shutting the pumps off for a good 30 minutes. Here is a different kind of chalice. I'm not going to guess which kind it is, but it's quite a different feeding response. As you can see, it's also using a mucus web and it's much more aggressively taking in the reefroids. Next up, we have a pectinia. We've tried to feed pectinia some frozen food as well, and I do think that they eat the frozen food. However, I think if given the choice, they like the powdered stuff quite a lot better. It might be more palatable for it. We get a very good feeding response. Now, pectinia don't really do a whole lot in the way of tentacle extension for feeding. There's a certain variety that we have that's a green and yellow variety and it tends out sweeper tentacles to fight stuff but it's not usually a feeding response when it comes to feeding it just relies on that mucus coat and it just vacuums it all in here is a platygyra this is one of those corals that consumes food fairly readily the only problem is that it has very small polyps it tries to eat the frozen food that we put down like the mysis and stuff but I think that the reefroids is a much easier food for it to consume. Given the opportunity, it just eats as much as it can. I think the only issue is that we perhaps don't give it enough time to eat. Generally speaking, we don't like to leave the pumps off for more than 30 minutes, but this is one of those that might actually benefit from a longer exposure to still water. Also, this is probably one of the most desirable corals that we carry. It's the platy cakes, platy gyra, and there's a long list of people that want a frag. It tends to grow extremely slowly. I'm thinking in the future here, we're probably gonna have to be putting a little bit more emphasis on a feeding regimen for them because they clearly do eat. I'm hoping that the additional feeding will also boost their growth rate. 
It's such a pretty coral. It's so in high demand. Definitely worth the effort. Here is our Diablo Diaceris. That super rainbow variant that I picked up most recently. Diaceris are so cool because they're one of these plate corals that can be propagated. They're also extremely easy to feed. They pretty much eat anything, whether it be frozen, whether it's pellets even. And you can see here it's having no difficulty soaking up all of the refroids that we put down for it. Diaceris are fairly slow growing. They're not the slowest growing or anything like that. For such a spectacular specimen like this, I'm going to be giving it plenty of food in hopes that it increases its growth rate. Okay, we've been feeding a lot of stony corals in this example, but this is an example of a soft coral. This is the Kojiwata finger leather. Most people don't go out of their way to feed this coral. It's always difficult to tell whether these guys are eating or not, but you're kind of seeing almost like a Xenia-like pulsing motion in the polyps on this time lapse. I do have a feeling that it is doing some kind of prey capture. Now, generally speaking, when I think of soft corals, I think phytoplankton, not so much zooplankton, which Refroids is. So I don't know, guys. I don't know. I think something is going on, but I don't know if like the biology is there. What do you think? All right, guys, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some ideas for feeding your corals. Thanks again to the sponsor of this video, Polyp Lab. And as a special bonus for Tidal Gardens customers, the next 1,000 orders will have a sample of Reefroids for you to try out courtesy of Polyp Lab. That does it from here. Happy reefing, guys.